come to learn from Jesus Christ and a good student, a good uh, uh, child of God who will have somewhere to write, write the scriptures, be like the Berean according to the book of Acts. When they went home, what did they do? They were checking whether what Paul was teaching was from the word of God. So you need to investigate and you need to uh, learn. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we are about to go into the teaching of the word of God, we pray that you may speak to each one of us in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We dedicate your woman servant as she comes to minister the word of God that will receive the word of God. We will be taught of you, Lord. We will be taught by the Holy Spirit. Open our ears, open our eyes to hear what the Spirit is saying and to see what the word of God reveals to us. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And let's put our hands together as take when it comes to uh, the word of God.
May you protect it, Jehovah God, Father, in the mighty yeah. name of Jesus. Amen. Let whatever you prepare, Jehovah God, Father, be used, pray, Jehovah God, and be fruitful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Let it fall, O God, on good soil in the Father, mighty name yeah. of Jesus. Let it bring change unto our hearts. We give Jehovah you the praise. It bring trust, O Jehovah God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Again, it, indeed, it is a privilege to be uh, in front and uh, just to preach the, the word of God. I never take anything lightly. Uh, I'm humbled and I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, this morning, um, uh, the, the word of God that has come this morning um, has come. Uh, because of uh, that song, um, uh, I think about a week ago, I was listening to this song and uh, I was meditating upon it and I was asking God, I said, God, what does it take to move your heart? Mm. So I was singing to that song and I'm asking God this question. I'm like, okay, God, I, you, I need to know as I was singing, so please God, tell me what moves you? What moves you? What moves your heart? I want to know what moves your heart. I want to know what it takes to move your heart. Hallelujah. So I'm singing and, and I'm just asking God and thinking, well, what does it take to move God's heart? You know, um, and then uh, God just spoke to me and he said, um, that's the revelation I got. I know if you go back and meditate on the word, you, you may get a different answer. Hallelujah. Because God reveals His will of God to us differently. But for me, and I thought I will share this with everyone, uh, 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 with what God revealed to me. Amen. As I was meditating on that song, and then I asked God, I said, God, what moves you? Then God said to me, What moves me is your circumstance. Mm. That's what moves me. Mm. What moves me is your situation. Mm. What moves me is the state of affairs where you are, or the state of something. What moves it me is the condition of your heart. Mm. Or what moves me, or the body, the condition of your body, how you are, how you are feeling, mm. the condi condition of something, your family, or the nation is all, the community, that is what moves me. Hallelujah. I was like, okay, wow. Because I thought God was going to reveal it to me. I was looking at it in a different angle because I thought, well, God is going to say to me, what moves me is the position when you're kneeling down and you're praying and you're asking God for all these things like, oh, I'm meditating, I'm coming to church every day and I'm praying to God and, and that is good. That is very good because communicating with God is very, very important. Having a relationship with God is very important. But in this moment, God said to me, what moves me is your circumstance. Mm. That's what moves me. And he, he, he said, what moves me is your desire. Hallelujah. The desires of your heart. The desire towards a situation mm. is what moves me. Hallelujah. And he said, what moves me is your ambition. What are your ambitions? Mm. Or oh, what moves me is hope. Your hope for something. Mm. Your dream for something. Hallelujah. Your wanting to do something mm. about a situation. Or your hope for a change Hallelujah. in your life. Mm. That is what moves me. Hallelujah. Your dream for a better future or for your children or your fa for your family. Mm. God said that that's what moves me. Hallelujah. And I was like, okay. So now I had to go uh, into the way of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, and also uh, I, I, I just wanted like, what does the way move? Me. Mm. But what does the word mean me? Mm. What does the word mean wherever you are? Google it, you've got the phones. What does the word mean move me? Because if we're going to go into the word of God, we need to understand the key word, which is move. Mm. How is God going to move in our lives? Hallelujah. What does 
does the word move? Men. Shekari, what does the word move? Men. Hallelujah. Yeah, to 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 uh to move uh it means uh, you are not at the same position. Amen. You locate, you move up, you are going forward. Amen. Mm. Another one, an act. To move is to act. Amen. Amen. Or action. Or uh, other version says to change. Or to maneuver. Mm. Or to measure. Or to motion. Mm. Has to move. Or to plot. I'm going to move. Hallelujah. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going to act. I'm going to take action. I'm going to make a change. Mm. Amen. Advanced. So what moves God? Amen. What makes God to act? Or to take action in our lives. What makes God to make a change in our lives? What makes God to maneuver, Hallelujah. to measure, or to motion, or to blow in our lives? Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What moves God? Mm. Our circumstances, our situations, the state of our children, mm. the state of my marriage, mm. the state of my community, my situation in my Hallelujah. family. That situation that nobody knows about. Hallelujah. Amen. That was most, most God. What's happening in my life? What's going on? That situation. What am I facing today? What am I suffering from? The state of my body is what's going to move God. Mm. Am I sick? Mm. My finances is what moves God. The war in Ukraine, God is going to move. God is going to move mightily. Hallelujah. The economy, how is it like? How has it affected me? That is what moves God. Amen. Amen. If we look in the Bible, the woman of the issue, of the woman with the issue of blood, Why would God act on that? Mm. Because the woman had an issue. Mm. That issue that she had made God, moved God mm. to take an action. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. We've got so many um, pastors. Uh, keep note of the time and see the Amen. Amen. I do. Away sometimes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. So, the, our circumstances will move God. Amen. The situation that we are facing today will move God. Please let's open the Bibles and read from Exodus um, chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. Or maybe I just said verse 10 to 14, actually. Exodus chapter. One Exodus chapter one. Exodus one. And verse ten to thirteen. Exodus chapter number one, verse thirteen to fourteen. Exodus chapter number one, verse thirteen and fourteen. The Bible says, "And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to save with rigor." with too much punishment. Verse 14. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick, mm -hmm. and in all manner of service in the field. All their service, they were made them to save with hardship. Amen. 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 That's, that's a very difficult vision, Pastor. <laughs> The Holy Bible says, but the Holy Bible says, uh, I'll start from 11. So they put their masters over them to oppress them mm. with forced labor. A situation is rising up in their lives. Amen. Amen. Forced labor. Oppression with forced labor. And they built Pitho and Ramesses as those cities for Pharaoh. So these, the children of Israel were building cities in, the, in, in, in Egypt for Pharaoh. Hallelujah. But the more they were oppressed, that's chapter uh, 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 verse 12, 
the more they multiply. So Pharaoh has is oppressing the children of Israel. But even in that middle we see that God is even blessing them because they, they were multiplying. Hallelujah. And the, the more they multiply their spread. So the Egyptian came to dread the Israelites. So the Israelites now the Egyptian hated the Israelites. They they, they hated them and made them ruthlessly, my vision said ruthlessly. So they, these Egyptians were waking the children of Israel ruthlessly. Mm. They made their lives bitter with hard labor, mm. in brick and in mortar, and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So now we see this um, uh, 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 the nation, the, 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 the Israelites mm. being oppressed, a situation is rising. A situation has come up now in their lives. They are being oppressed. You know when you are being oppressed, you are not happy. Mm. You wake up in the morning, you are not happy. You 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 go to work, you are not happy. You come back, you look at the children, you can't even laugh mm. because you are being oppressed. Hallelujah. So this is what was happening to the children of Israel. Now let's go to Exodus chapter three and seven, and chapter three and verse seven. Exodus chapter three and verse seven. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 7. Exodus 3, 7. The Bible says, I will use a different version. Amen. Then the Lord said, I have certainly seen the troubles of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cry because of their slave masters. I know how sad they are. Amen. So I have come down to save them from the Egyptians. Amen. 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 So, what did we see in uh, Exodus 1? We see the oppression. Mm. And what have we seen in Exodus chapter 3? God moving. What made God move in the children, in the, uh, the children of Israel's life? The circumstances. Mm. The situation. Yeah. They were being oppressed. So God in heaven looked at them and said, My children are being oppressed. Mm. I've seen their suffering. Mm. I'm concerned about their suffering. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come. From the hand of the Egyptians. Amen. Amen. What made God move? The Israel circumstances in Egypt. They were slaves for 400 years. Mm. And God said, I have seen them. Mm. So God now started what? Moving. Taking action. Amen. Amen. Taking action. Moving. I'm sure the children of Israel, they had desires. And their desire was to get out of slavery. Their hope was to get out of slavery. Amen. Their ambition was to get out of slavery. To get out of that situation Amen. that they were facing. That circumstance that they have found themselves in. What situation are you, are you facing today? Mm. Hallelujah. What issue have you got today? And I have brought good news this morning that God is going to move. Hallelujah. Amen. What moves God? Mm. What moves God is the circumstance that you are facing today. Mm. That's what's going to move God. Hallelujah. What is going to move God is the situation that you are found yourself in today. Hallelujah. That's what moves God. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you the praise for you. Yes, Lord. Mm. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you this morning. Mm. Hallelujah. So God remembered the children of Israel in Exodus. He remembered them. Without a circumstance, without an issue in your life, then 
Why does God need to move? Mm. Mm. Oh, because it's just worship God and praise Him. But God wants to move in your life. There is a circumstance in your life. There is a situation in, in your life. There is an issue in your family. You're facing something today with your children. Mm. You're facing something today in your community. We're facing something today in our nations. And God is saying, this is what moves me. Hallelujah. I am going to act. Mm, I'm, I'm going coming to down. I'm coming down. I've seen your suffering. I'm going to act. Amen. Let's please uh, open the Bible to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8 and verse 43. Luke chapter number 8. Luke chapter number 8 and verse 43. Amen. Luke 8, 43. The Bible says, There was a woman in the crowd that lost blood for 12 years. She had paid all money to the doctors. And she had no money left. But her body could not Stop her bleeding. The condition grew worse. Amen. 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 The condition grew worse. Amen. Amen. And then uh, carry on, Pastor, please. Uh, 44. Who can read she that? came behind Jesus in the crowd. Then she touched the edge of his garment. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Then Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? Mm. Everyone around him said, It was not me. I did not touch you, Master. Then Peter said to Jesus, There are so many people around you. How come you ask, Who touched me? Verse 46, Jesus responded, Someone did touch me. I felt it within me. Power and virtue has come out of me. The woman knew that she could not hide it anymore. So she was very afraid. When she came to Jesus, she went down to the ground in front of him. She spoke so that all people could hear what she said. I wanted to be well, she told them, so I touched the aim of his garment. Amen. As soon as I touched him, I became well. Verse 48, daughter, Jesus said to her, you are well again. Amen. Because you believed in me, do not have troubles in your mind. Anymore. Do not fear. Amen. 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 So we see here the woman with the issue of blood. Number one, mm. she had an issue. Hallelujah. She was sick. She mm. had blood pouring out of her for 12 long years. Hallelujah. A situation. And then she heard that Jesus was passing by. And the Bible tells us that she, as Jesus was in his way, the crowds almost crashed, crashed him. Mm. And the woman was there who had subject to bleeding. Mm. She had spent all she had on doctors, but no one could heal her. Hallelujah. She came up behind him and touched mm. the edge of his clock. Hallelujah. Like that. It was the edge of his clock. Mm. Hallelujah. Number one, she had an issue. Mm. Number two, she had a desire. Mm. Hallelujah. A desire to be healed. Mm. She had an ambition to be healed, to be made whole. She had hope to be healed. Mm. And she said, no matter what happens today, Hallelujah. I am going to meet Jesus and if I can only touch 
If only I can touch him. And she went low and touched him. How low do you want to go mm. to Amen. get your change? Hallelujah. How low are you willing to go mm. to find the desires of your heart? Hallelujah. How low are you willing to go to get the answer? The Bible tells us the woman of the issue. She went low. Hallelujah. The mm. What moved Jesus for his power to move out of him is the circumstance that the woman was in. There was a lot of people that was following him. But this woman had the desire, she had, she had hope, she had ambition of, I'm going to be healed today. Hallelujah. And then when she touched Jesus, Jesus said that virtue has left me. Mm, virtue has gone out of me. The circumstance of the woman, the situation of the woman made Jesus to react, mm. to do something about it. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. The woman of the issue of blood, mm. her issue made Jesus react. Hallelujah. Her issue made Jesus act. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Let's see um, another miracle that Jesus performed in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 2. John chapter 8, verse 2. Hallelujah. John chapter number 8. Yes, 2 to 11. You can uh, skip, uh, Pastor. Um, yes, uh, no, let's just read a little bit quickly, Pastor. Thank you. John chapter number 8. And uh, from verse 2. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, John chapter number 8, and from verse 2. The Bible says, Early the next morning he returned to God's great house, the temple. Mm -hmm. All the people came to him. He sat down and he began to teach them. The Pharisees, the scribes, the men who taught God's rules, brought a woman to him. They had found her with another man. She was committing adultery with a man. They caused her to stand in front of all the people there. They said to Jesus, Teacher, we found this woman. She was committing adultery with a man who was not a husband. Mm. Moses teaches us, the law of Moses said that we should throw stones at this kind of a woman to kill her. What do you say about this? They asked this question for a reason. They wanted Jesus to say something that they could use against him. But Jesus bent down himself. He started to write on the ground with his finger. They continued to ask him questions. Then he stood up. He said to them, If any one of you has never done anything wrong, mm. he can throw the first stone at this woman. Mm. Then he bent himself down again and he continued to write on the ground. Verse 9. When they heard this, they began to leave. One by one, they went. The older ones went first. So then Jesus was alone with this woman. She was still standing there. Verse 10. Jesus stood up. He said to a woman, Where are your accusers? There seems to be nobody still here who wanted to punch you. She said, There is nobody, sir. So Jesus said, I do not want to punish you either. Go your way. Do not sin again. Amen. Do wrong things no more. Amen. 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 So this woman was an, adult, an adulterer. Amen. Amen. So Jesus, when they brought her, people wanted to stone her. Mm. And Jesus. 
Jesus rose up on our behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. And what do we see here in the last uh, sentence? It says, mm. Go now and live your life of sin. Do not sin no more. Amen. Amen. So Jesus was able to tell her to say, Stop sinning no more. Mm. He did something about her situation. Mm. If Jesus was not there, they would have killed her. Uh, yes. The situation where she was, that situation, she was an adulterer. Mm. She was sinning. Mm. And everybody knew that she was sinning. So they brought her in the courtyard mm. and they wanted to stone her. Mm. And Jesus was able to say, Who has not sinned? May they cast a stone. You know, God is able to talk to us in every situation. Hallelujah. The circumstance of our hearts. Mm. Even these people, the Pharisees, who wanted to look like holy than thou, Jesus saw the condition of their heart mm. and he spoke to them. Hallelujah. I've seen the condition of your heart. I've seen you. I know you sin. Mm. And here you are telling this woman Hallelujah. that you are an adulterer. You yourself will do the same thing mm. in hiding. Upon her. Mm. Those who have not seen mm. the circumstances of Jesus could see the circumstances of the Pharisees. Hallelujah. I'm sure when they left that place, they were able to, uh, to, to, to speak to themselves and say, Wow, mm. that was true. Hallelujah. And I'm sure that probably, I pray that it, it brought change in their lives. Mm. That's what God does. Hallelujah. The condition, the circumstance of our heart, what we are facing today, mm. God is able to do something about it. That's what moves God, is how we are today. Amen. Amen. God looks at what we are facing today and is able to move. Amen. He's Hallelujah. able to do something. He's Hallelujah. able to maneuver in our lives. What are you facing today? Hallelujah. I'm sure like you, you are asking God to say, God, what moves you? I pray good news this morning. Hallelujah. What moves God is what you are facing today. Hallelujah. That's what moves God. Mm. That's what moves God. Hallelujah. The condition, in fact, the whole Bible story from the beginning or from when Adam sinned to up to Jesus came and was crucified was about the condition. Hallelujah. Our condition. Hallelujah. We sinned against God. And God could see how we are suffering, how we are facing challenges in life every day. Hallelujah. And he was moved by our circumstances. He was moved by the condition of our hearts. He was moved by the condition of our bodies. Mm. And he said, what am I going to do? I am going to send my son, Jesus Christ, to heal these people. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you are this morning uh, maybe asking, maybe your faith is failing you. Hallelujah. Uh, maybe you are in despair and you don't know what to do. Hallelujah. Or you are asking questions. You say, how can this be? Or what am I going to do about this circumstance? I want to tell you that your circumstance is going to move God. Hallelujah. What you are facing today is what is going to move God. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. God is going to act because of the issue that you have, like the issue of the woman of blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Or oh, this woman and a doubter. God moved in her life and he saved her uh, from being killed uh, in the courtyard. Hallelujah. He saved her. He stood up for her and he spoke on her behalf. Amen. Amen. So what is going to move God in your life is what you are facing today. Amen. Amen. And God is going to take action. God, God is going to move mightily and change your circumstance. He changed the circumstance of the children of Israel. In Exodus, we hear the children of Israel um, being oppressed by the Egyptians. And in two chapters down the line, we hear God finding a way out for them. Hallelujah. God moving, taking action, getting them out of the situation that they were in. Hallelujah. God is going to find a way for you this morning. Mm. 
in whatever you are facing. Amen. Oh, yeah. God is going to move by you. Amen. Amen. God is going to take action accordingly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the praise. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We, we give you glory. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 I'll just read one more. Uh, you can take these chapters and just go and read Mark uh, chapter 2. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 2. There's 1 to 4. Mark chapter number two. Uh, yes. Mark chapter two. There's one to four. Mark chapter number two. Verse one to four. Uh, the Bible says. Mark two, one to four. That Jesus returned to Capernaum several days after that. People reported that he had come back to his home. Many people came into the house. The house was full of people, that there was no enough room, even outside the door. Jesus was teaching the people. When men came, they were carrying another man who could not walk by himself. They would not reach Jesus because there were many people there. So they made an opening on the roof above the place where Jesus was. They helped the man to go down. They lowered him through the roof. The man was still lying on his small carpet or man. And Jesus saw the man and his friends. And he knew that they believed. So he said to the man, My friend, I forgive you for the wrong things that you have done. But some teachers of God's law were sitting there. They thought about it and Amen. the word that Jesus had spoken to them. Amen. 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 So these people had, had brought a man who could not walk. Amen. Amen. And what they did is they, um, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus. And after digging it through, the Bible said they lowered the mat the, uh, the paralyzed man was lying on. So they lowered him. Imagine uh, you, 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 you find an opening up in the roof and bring somebody mm. down. That's the faith that they had. Mm. That's the desire they had. Hallelujah. That's the ambition they had. The dream that this man was going to get better. Hallelujah. So they brought him down. That desire, Jesus saw the faith in them. That's what made Jesus act. Hallelujah. The condition of the man, the circumstance of the man, the desire, the hope, mm. the ambition. Hallelujah. Jesus looked at this man and he says, Son, your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He healed him. First, he had a circumstance mm. or a situation in his life or an issue in his life. He couldn't walk. Hallelujah. Amen. He couldn't Amen. walk. Mm. That's the first thing. He had a situation. Have you got a situation today? The first thing, the first question I'm asking, have you got a situation today? Mm. Are you facing something today? Hallelujah. What's your issue? Is it money? What's your issue? Is it family? Are you facing family uh, generational cases where you can't do anything? Have you got an issue in your family where you have looked and looked and you can't find answers? Have you got an explained things in your life that you can't figure out? What is this? Have you got a circumstance in your life? That's the first thing that we are going to identify. Have you got an issue of your heart? Maybe unforgiveness. That's an issue. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Your issue might be unforgiveness. Hallelujah. Have you got an issue in your body? Maybe your issue is just uh, your sick, sickness. Mm. Is there something? 
something that you are desiring, then you've been asking and you can't find answers. That's the first thing that you need to identify is a circumstance, a situation. Amen. Amen. What's your issue this morning? That is my question. What is your issue this morning? Amen. Amen. What are you facing this morning? And then, when we find what we are facing this morning, Hallelujah. Then we have to ask God, God, mm. what moves you? My issue moves God. Yeah. Your issue moves God. The issue of the children of Israel, in Israel as in Egypt, moves God. Hallelujah. The issue of the woman with the blood for twelve years moved God, moved Jesus, that she was able to be healed. The Amen. 
Amen. David, when we read the, the Bible about David, David was the man after God's heart. Mm. Amen. Amen. But when it came to building the temple, God said, David, you won't build my temple. Mm. What did he do? He raised up somebody else. Hallelujah. The temple needed to be built. Mm. So I said, Solomon, you shall build my temple. Hallelujah. There is nothing that God can't do. Mm. I know sometimes we look at our circumstances and we think God can't get us out of this situation. Especially sometimes when we look at other people or in our families or we look at our fathers and we say, oh, my family faced poverty. Mm. So this is why I'm in poverty. God is able to do it. He's Amen. able to take action and take you out of that situation. If he could raise up another man to build the temple, yeah. he can raise up another man in your life. Hallelujah. Another person in your life. Amen. Amen. Right. Yes, Lord. The issue that you are faced today, may your children never face it. Hallelujah. In, in Jesus', Jesus his name. name. The circumstances that we are faced today, mm. I know God is going to move Hallelujah. mightily in our yes. lives. Amen. What moves God is my circumstance. I, I know that is what moves God. Hallelujah. God is moving in action. Amen. Hallelujah. And He's going to do accordingly. Amen. I want us to take that today. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let us just pray. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you all the honor. Yes, to go, mighty God. Oh, Lord, we worship you, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Mighty Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Hallelujah. Oh, Jehovah God. What you can do, Jehovah God. Oh, mighty Jesus. God. Oh. You are going to move mighty in our lives, Lord God. Ba, 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 ba. What moves you, Jehovah God, is my Mighty God. My, my God. issue moves you, Jehovah God. Ba, ba, ba. The state of my children, Jehovah God, yes, moves Lord. your heart. Yes, Lord. What I'm facing today moves you, Jehovah God. In the name Father, may you move into action today, yes, Lord God. Lord. Like the woman of the issue of blood, who came in contact with Jesus, and Jesus healed her immediately, instantly. Jehovah God, may you move in our lives, oh God. God. May you tend to everything that is concerning us today, oh God. God. Father, may you tend to our children, Jehovah God. Father,
Jesus. Yes, Lord, Lord, we pray. We praise you, Lord. Yes, my God. We give in you, O God. We give you. We know, Jehovah God, that you are working it out, O God. Hallelujah. We know and we trust you, Jehovah God. Yes. We trust you. Oh Lord, I trust you with my issues, O God. Yes. Whenever you are, just say, God, I trust yes, you with Lord, my issues. I Give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give